next we have Vanessa. Vanessa Kuto Johnson's chapbook, Speech Rinse, won Slope Edition's 2016 chapbook contest. Pungent Din's Concentric, her first full-length book, is forthcoming from Tolson Books in December. Please join me in welcoming Vanessa. So, so yeah, she mentioned my third. Uh, we got one copy over there, and um, my second was from Dancing Girl Press as well. Oh, yay! yay. <laughs> so there's some copies there too. And so I'm going to focus actually on my first one, uh, Life of Francis. Uh, it's from Gambling the Isle, so they're primarily uh, putting out literary journals, but they also have an annual chapbook contest. Uh, and this one won back in 2014. Uh, so yeah, I'm really enjoying all the scientific language that we're hearing today. Um, I hope you're ready for more science because for this collection, so as far as how this came about, I was thinking I want to be interacting with some kind of text. And I thought, I have a physics textbook that's just sitting around that I'm not majoring in science anymore. And so let me have a look at that. And I looked and I saw the concept inquiries. You know, the questions that are checking, like, do you understand how gravity works or whatever, right? <laughs> and so, so I picked out 16 of those, and then I lineated them, and then I wrote prose poems in response. And so the way that this unfolded, uh, so the life of Francis develops through these poems. All right, so of course we're going to start off with the birth. All right, so... We have, so each of these are numbered, so this is number one, and so it, again it starts with the concept inquiry. An adult sits on a child's table. The table is about to break. Is it correct to say that it is the weight of the adults that is causing the table to break? It's a mother sitting on the table in labor. If she gives birth quickly enough, maybe the table won't break. Maybe the table will clap. Maybe she should have cleared the table beforehand. <laughs> Her finger almost crinkles a fork. This is how Francis arrives inches from the microwave's door. <laughs> Two. A boy wants to knock down a coconut with a rock and a slingshot. He knows it is unlikely that the coconut will fall while he is shooting. Does he aim directly at the coconut, or does he aim a little higher? Today, a husband and wife drink coconut milk. The boy, long ago, was successful, harassed tree houses, and stole the rugs mothers put in them. His garage was Rug Palace because he never put a car in it. His name is Francis because it was his father's, father's father's name. One day, every rug was folded into a truck. The truck unraveled, which is better than losing the windshield. Francis's cigarette stayed lit. He pointed it out in front of him so the light he could find the thread's end and head back home. <laughs> Three. Why is it a good idea to increase the space between your car and the car in front of you when the speed of the cars increases? More about the marriage. She met, <laughs> she met him the night he walked home with the windshield under his arm and his thumb moving yarn in front of him. She was in a car and he wasn't a car, so she decreased her speed. He didn't have Rug Palace anymore, so he tried to impress her with his face against the windshield glass. Give her something unique, temporary. She thought this was him sharing his vulnerability. She pressed herself against the glass. He put the glass away. The momentum continued. The glass gave no shadows. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to skip over to, let's see, uh, number 12. All right. Legend has it that Archimedes, acting as an advisor to the ruler of Syracuse, devised an optical system made of shields that could concentrate sunlight sufficiently well to set and be boats on fire from a distance. How plausible is this legend? <laughs> Francis wants to smoke like Archimedes is his enemy. He lifts his cigarette to the sun, begging for a light. His feet are boats on the sand. He brushes the ground like something is missing. The sound displaces 
the sand displaces and trickles. The trick is he is wearing sandals. His toga collects his salt and wishes it could eat him. <laughs> the toga rubs him raw in a few spots and thinks itself epicurean. The toga ultimately fails its tooth and tongueless. <laughs> All right. See, so I'm going to skip to number 15. If you were to, were to run a film of an egg that drops to the floor, you would have little trouble determining if the film were running backward or not. Yet, if the film were an extreme close-up so that you were observing the interaction of molecules in the dropped egg, you would be hard-pressed to say if the film were running forward or backward. How are these two statements consistent? The egg is clumsy. It keeps trying to catch Francis in the hand or mouth, but misses. Francis curls into a ball, competing with the egg. I can have more curves than you, he says to it. Mockery is the sincerest form of imitation. When something hatches from the egg, Francis won't know what to do. Or in other words, he will have no choice. <laughs> All right, we'll end with the death of Francis. So yes, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not like he necessarily dies, but it's this is how he's going to die someday, someday. All right, so number 16. Folklore has it that as a teenager, Einstein worried about what would happen if somebody were looking in a mirror while accelerating to a speed faster than that of light. What could Einstein have been worried about? This is how Francis will die. The speed of light looks into a mirror and sees the light of speed. This will happen at a local clothing store and one of the mirrors on a pillar among the racks of clothes. Francis will be trying on a jacket and will step to the mirror to see how he looks. He will see himself looking at how he sees himself, bisecting the views of the speed of light and light of speed. Only his reflection will live only by will. <laughs> All right, so that's my point.